Hi there and welcome to Dirt Road Believer. I'm Tina. I'm so glad that you're with me and I have, I have, have some rare moments to myself this morning. Um, I dropped my son off to take his SAT and so I have several hours by myself. So I'm in Rome, Georgia. I came up to Berry College, my alma mater, to the mountain campus and it's just quiet up here. I'm at the um, Old Mill and so I'm just going to enjoy some time with you in the Word this morning. Okay, so last week you probably saw that my son um, turned 16, my oldest son. And so this week he went to get his license. Today he's at the SAT. And I've been just slightly overwhelmed at all the documents required <laughs> to do these things, to prove he is who he says he is. And that leads us into today's devotion. Um, and it's the name 101, um, the name of the Lord our God and how we are to um, show reverence to it and how we are to treat it and handle it. And he is who he says he is. And he only needs one document to prove that. And that is the word of God. There's another document too. It's that um, word that's written on my heart, everything he's ever done for me. Um, he continually shows me he is who he says he is, and um, he doesn't need 22 documents to prove it, like getting your driver's license. It was not like that when I was 16 years old. All right, guys, we're going to enjoy some, some peace and quiet here in a few minutes in our devotion. Um, take a look at this video, and we'll be right back. chickens now to a different location for bidders to bid on them.
question. I hope y'all enjoy just the surroundings and the sound of nature and just this quiet time in the morning. It's so, so precious. Um, so we are talking today about how we use the name of the Lord and how important that is. And just bringing us back to that third commandment, um, which is do not take the Lord's name in vain. And exactly what does that mean? Um, it's not just how we say his name. So the way we use the name of the Lord matters greatly to him and to our witness. We're all guilty of misusing his name at one time or another to bring him less than the glory that his name deserves. Um, and there are lots of ways that we can profane the name of the Lord. So today I just want to give you some truth and some scripture to back up how we should really treat the name of the Lord. So I'm going to give you three points and if you want to grab your Bible and uh, maybe a pen you can take some notes. So first, God has many names and each one of them are to be held um, in reverence in our speech and in our living. So the Bible says that his name is above all names. It is holy and it is meant to be treated in a very holy manner. His word says that his name is worthy of praise um, and it is to be used in prayer but sadly his name gets misused a lot in a manner that brings his name um, down in the eyes of the world and remember the third commandment the third commandment is do not take the name of the Lord God in vain vain means useless producing no result. Well, when people just blurt out the name um, of Jesus or Christ or God um, because they're angry or frustrated, um, it produces no spiritual fruit, none whatsoever. But it should produce in others around them a spiritual kink. Um, in other words, when I hear, um, when I hear someone blurt out JC or you know a lot of people say Jesus and the way they say it is like a, a frustrated tone that puts a little kink in my spirit so when Christians who bear the name of Christ use his name kind of like a cuss word or just blurt it out like that we should feel something and I've got some runners coming by so you'll hear them way to go up early this morning um, exercising <laughs> not me um, so it saddens me to hear um, especially little kids because I'm a teacher take the name um, of the Lord in vain simply because they've heard their parents do it um, and so I do get very bothered by that especially when I hear a little child say it so um, you know I just simply say you know that's a name that we should call on um, if we're praying and it should be offensive to Christians when we hear the name above all names, the name of the Lord our God, um, just like put out there like it's nothing. We should feel something about that. It would certainly be offensive to you if um, a family member, a spouse, a child, somebody just blurted out an ugly name about them. You would take offense to that. Um, you wouldn't be very happy about it. And we should feel the same way about the name above all names. Okay, Proverbs 18, 28 says, The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. In other words, those who just put words out there carelessly, um, there is a consequence. And Ecclesiastes 10, 12 says, Wise words bring approval, but fools are destroyed by their own words. We know that the power of the tongue um, has can bring life and it can bring death and everything that comes out of it we are accountable for. Remember that that day we talked about last week, that day 101, um, we will give an account for every word that we have spoken, good or bad. You can find that in Matthew 12, 37. Secondly, the Bible um, goes into talking about swearing. Um, like, I swear to God that. Um, 
Matthew 5, 33 through 37 says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Um, if someone doesn't believe you, then that's on them. We don't need the name of God to back up what we're telling people. Um, our yeses are yeses and our noes are noes. And then lastly, and probably more importantly than what comes out of our mouth, it is um, we can misuse the name of the Lord through our living. Matthew 15, 7 through 9 says, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far, far from me. Now, to call ourselves Christians and then deliberately disobey God continually is to take his name in vain. We bear the name of Christ. And so every action that we have can either be um, bring glory to him or it can be in vain. To unbelievers around us, um, it makes his name seem like, what was that definition? useless producing no result if we have the name christian but then we don't bear the name christ to reflect christ um, and bring honor and glory to his name then the unbelievers around us are just like well i mean what's the point why <laughs> why go to the trouble to call yourself christian so how do we expect non-believers to see that we are changed and transformed by the power of a king named Jesus Christ if we live contrary to what Jesus taught us to live. We must understand the significance of professing to be a Christian and then misrepresenting the very name that we bear. The way we act, the way we think, speak, and treat others, it all adds up to the holy regard we, we hold for his holy name. And there are gonna be many who call on the name of the Lord in vain during their lifetime, who will cry out, Lord, Lord, on judgment day. And the scripture said, he will not know them. The way in which we use or misuse the name of the Lord can either bring us into fellowship or misrepresent him entirely and bring separation from him. So to know him, is to know the depth and sanctity of his name and how to treat it. Matthew 7, 21 through 23 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So when we call on the name of the Lord, 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 let it be in truth, let it be in reverence, um, let it be in praise, let it be in thanksgiving and prayer. All right, guys, please like, share, subscribe. And hey, guys, until next time, slow down. Take the dirt road. <laughs>